dinner time. Growing up, this was the cue to abandon what you were doing and head for the bathroom to wash your hands. My caregivers worked hard at programming the wash your hands before dinner behavior. This two-minute exercise is designed to avoid unwelcome bacterial guests and bits of dirt at the dinner table. Hopefully, it's not a routine you've completely abandoned now that you're all grown up. Although, let's be honest, most of the time, the bacteria living on your keyboard or phone are potentially a lot less hazardous to your health than the pond critters. Hmm, maybe not. <laughs> but we're not talking microflora today. We're talking dinner time habits. Science suggests it might be time to add a new pre dinner activity to your routine exercise snacking. Join us for this episode of Better Body Chemistry TV as we unpack the benefits of a little exercise before dinner. It makes biological sense and there's plenty of evidence it can make a difference if you're struggling with sugar spikes. Better Body Chemistry TV is brought to you by Dr. Sandy, a scientist turned gremlin buster, helping you battle sugar gremlins, heifer lumps and other health horribles through better body chemistry. Remember, small things can make a big difference to your health. So. Let's start with the evidence. Now, one of the first groups of researchers to study the value of exercise snacking was a team based at the University of Otago in New Zealand. They put nine rather tubby individuals who were insulin resistant on an exercise regimen. Their protocol went on for several days, but the day that we are interested in is day three. This is the day when the exercising happened. And everyone had an opportunity to do one of each of the regimens. The continuous regimen looked like a standard exercise session and involved a 30-minute moderate intensity, that is 60% of maximum heart rate workout on a treadmill, the kind of thing that health gurus around the world advise. The exercise snacking regimen took things up a notch. Thankfully, it only lasted for 10 minutes. It involved six one-minute bursts of intense activity on the treadmill. Participants had to get their heart thumping like a racehorse. They had to reach 90% of their maximum heart rate. Now, the participants rested for a minute after the big push. They didn't actually sit down. They continued on the treadmill at a more leisurely pace. Now, health gurus would refer to this kind of training as HIT training. Now, in terms of the timing, the continuous exercise session preceded the evening meal, and the exercise snack sessions happened 30 minutes before breakfast, lunch, and supper. So when all was said and done, the exercise programs were identical. The difference was in the timing. Here is the mean glucose concentrations of the participants throughout the day. At first glance, it's pretty obvious. The exercise snackers, represented by the blue line, had lower sugar peaks at all the eating opportunities. And their sugar levels returned to baseline more rapidly. Remarkably, the 10 minutes packed the same punch as the 30-minute session, highlighting that short is as beneficial as long. And this is good news if you are time constrained. It's not a big surprise. Exercise requires muscles to fuel up. So as expected, the exercise sessions improve sugar levels. The interesting finding is that the exercise snacking actually did a better job at keeping the sugar levels in check overall than the continuous exercise. And as a rule, remember, lower sugar levels create better body chemistry. And wowza, it all happens in less time. So why does it work? Well, muscles are big glucose consumers all of the time, but especially when they're exercising. 
and bulk imports of glucose depend on the GLUT4 gate being up. The trouble is, the default location of these gates is deep inside the cell. They're actually tethered down, and only when the appropriate signal is given are they translocated to the surface to allow sugar entry. Unfortunately, insulin gives the signal, which means when you're insulin resistant, the gates are stuck inside. They're not where they're meant to be when they're meant to be. Now, they do eventually make it to the surface. The arrival is just delayed. This mucking about allows the sugar levels to remain high for longer than ideal and contributes to the bad body chemistry. Now, insulin is one of the triggers to mobilize that GLUT4 gate, but he doesn't actually cut the cord. He just issues the instructions and insulin is not the only trigger. Contracting muscles kick the gates down. When muscles are contracting, they initiate a cascade of chemical signals which see calcium levels skyrocket inside the muscle fibers. And it is this signaling that facilitates a snip to those cords so the GLUT4 gate ends up at the surface. Now, to be perfectly honest, the distribution of the gates is a little bit different, but this difference is not an issue. It works. Bulk glucose imports happen effortlessly. By exercising just before eating a carb-heavy snack, you're able to get the glucose gates up efficiently. And it's this efficiency that saves the day. Because it means when the glucose is consumed and makes it past all the gatekeepers in the digestive tract into the circulation, it's able to immediately enter the muscle cells. There's no hanging around until the pancreas and the liver get their act together and insulin finally arrives on the scene. Of course, what happens to the glucose when it gets inside is a little bit different. There's going to be a lot less of it being burned for energy and a lot more being stored as glycogen. But the point is, the circulating glucose is not dependent on the body's compromised insulin response. It goes in. The postprandial sugar spike is lower, both in the moment and for hours thereafter. In fact, in the study, the benefits were still in play the next day because it turns out that putting away the GLUT4 gates following muscle contraction is a whole lot slower. The GLUT4 gates don't immediately drop down, which is what happens when they respond to insulin. My studies suggest it can take as long as 130 minutes to pack them away. And this is good news. It means that muscles will continue to import glucose a wee bit longer, providing glycemic benefits beyond the postprandial window, which in the healthy is usually around 90 minutes. And it's the perfect solution if you're a time-constrained, metabolically challenged individual. Let's face it, it's often difficult to schedule a big exercise session into a very busy day. And a big exercise session at the gym, although beneficial, can still leave you with lots of sitting on your butt time. Squeezing in a 10-minute exercise snack between things is much more doable and potentially more beneficial. So grab a skipping rope and hop to it. Hop for a minute and then take a one-minute breather. Rinse and repeat. Not coordinated enough to avoid getting tangled in the skipping rope. Try some jumping jacks or burpees or run on the spot. Remember to get those knees high. And if cardiovascular fitness isn't your jam, lift something heavy a couple of times or mix or match as you see fit. The type of exercise you're looking for is something that doesn't need fancy equipment and is 
exhausting. Ideally, you want to do it until you can't anymore and then do it once or twice again until you are officially finished. Then call it quits. Exhaust yourself and win. We're living on the run, so snacking is a cultural norm. Snacking is seldom good for you, but exercise snacking is the exception. So go on, indulge yourself. Next time you hear that dinner bell ring, you can avoid sugar spikes if you put down your phone and pick up the skipping rope. For more ideas on how to minimize those sugar spikes at dinner time, head over to the Suppressing Sugar Spikes library page on the Better Body Chemistry blog. You can find the link in the description below and begin the journey today to better body chemistry and better health. Here is one of the references that I've used to tell today's story. You can find the rest on the blog post. Know someone who's pre-diabetic or overtly diabetic. Share this video with them so they know how to get the glute 4 gates up fast enough at dinner time to keep sugar spikes in check. And if this is your first time here, be sure to subscribe to our channel so you catch future episodes of Better Body Chemistry TV. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Remember, small things can make a big difference to your health.